This episode of Weekly Weird News is sponsored by Feels. Opening greetings to all of you. Let's start off this week's episode with some animal news. Oh, cool. And specifically some insect news. The, the smallest of the animals. Mm-hmm. If you live in Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Michigan, Illinois, Georgia, Virginia, West Virginia, New York, Indiana, Ohio, Maryland, North Carolina, Delaware, Kentucky, Eastern Tennessee, or Washington, D.C., it's happening! The cicadas have returned. Yes. Or are about to return. Yeah. And you may already know that due to the constant deafening buzz that you're hearing coming from outside. That is not Leatherface outside your door revving a chainsaw. It's just millions of horny flying insects that have been waiting a very long time to get some. Yeah. Which happens to be just as loud as a revving chainsaw. Yes. So what's uh, the difference? Uh, you know, uh, people last time we talked about this were like, yeah, cicadas, we have them all the time. And it's like, no, 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 no. Not like this. These are uh, periodic cicadas. Yeah, the Brood X. Over in Europe and like the rest of the world, there's cicadas. You just have a normal amount of cicadas all the time. There's yeah. billions coming. For some reason, in America, or the eastern eastern North America specifically, is the only place where we have this weird periodic cicadas yeah. that just sit in the earth for years and years. Now, the sudden emergence of these big, loud, horny bugs is due to the North American periodic cicada's very unique life cycle, which is different from cicada species elsewhere. From just after they're born, they spend either 13 or 17 years underground, depending on the species, just feeding on tree roots. When either 13 or 17 years has passed, the entire regional brood emerges from the ground all at once for a month-long fuckfest. First, they climb up on the trees and molt out of their old exoskeletons, leaving behind huge piles of what look like dead cicadas. Uh, a wonderful crunch. Mm-hmm. You just walk around. Do, 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 do. Uh, then the males all start making their mating song, which to us just sounds like an extremely loud buzz. It's very annoying. Uh, they spend a few weeks banging each other. Uh, the females lay eggs inside trees, then everyone dies. A few weeks later, the eggs hatch, and the newborns leave the tree and immediately head underground where they will spend the next 13 to 17 years hitting puberty and coming out ready to fuck. Yeah. And repeating the whole process. It's a a very strange life cycle, Mm -hmm. but um, it's got to be wild. Much like the the humans who wait 13 to 17 years, emerge from puberty, and you do the mating call, sheesh! Yeah. It's the same thing. It's 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 like if all the homeschool all the homeschool kids arriving at college at the same time. It's uh it's wild, you know. <laughs> Stay away. You spent 17 years just on your own. Now Keep an eye on that kid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, 2021, I mean, we we get these cicadas every year, but mm-hmm. 2021 is a notable year for cicadas because this year's brood brood X, mm-hmm. which Really just means brood 10 in Roman numerals, but it sounds way cooler when you call it brood X. Yeah. It's the biggest brood of periodic cicadas in the U.S. in terms of both range and concentration. And folks, if that wasn't bad enough, we regret to inform you that brood X is hooked on drugs. Mm -hmm. Specifically, psilocybin, a.k.a. shrooms, and cathinone, the amphetamine better known as bath salts. Holy shit. And uh, a drugged up cicada is even hornier than a normal cicada. Now you may be wondering, how do these insects, who haven't even seen sunlight in 17 years, manage to find a drug hookup so quickly when I can't even track down some good shrooms living in the second biggest city of the United States? You might be thinking that, Mm -hmm. not me. Well, first off, they didn't. I mean, this is all thanks to a fungus called Massospora. And uh, trust me, the cicadas, they did not ask for this because there are some unintended side effects that are horrific. Yeah, from Vice News, cicadas in the United States are infected by fungal amphetamines that will drive them yet again to engage in sex-crazed mating orgies. Massospora cicadina, a yellow-white fungus, grows in the insects' bodies and boosts their sex drives to the point of mania. It also makes their genitals fall off. Oh, there it is. Uh, This isn't a new phenomenon. Uh, Vice has covered the sex-crazed cicada summer for the past two years, but the 2021 iteration is upon us, and billions of brood X cicadas are currently emerging for the first time in 17 years in 15 states across North America, where they're expected to spend four to six weeks mating before all of them drop dead. And Massospora, laced with psilocybin, the same chemical as psychedelic mushrooms, 
and capable of producing compounds of an amphetamine called cathinone or bath salt, is making some cicadas want to mate more than usual. Massospora is known to lie dormant in the soil where some cicadas spend years of their lives, and in some cases infect the insects before they rise to the surface. The fungus then grows inside the cicadas' abdomens as they start to shed their skins, filling their insides until the lower abdomen drops away and a white plug of fungus starts to grow in its place. Shortly thereafter, the fungus puts the cicadas' libidos into hyperdrive, and the insects start wanting to have sex with as many potential mates as they can. It's basically cicada burning now. I was just going to say. <laughs> yeah. It's the, the summer of love out there. Yeah. Sex, drugs, rock and roll. I mean, we, we think that buzzing sounds terrible, but to them? To them, it's That's like, like Hendrix. Front, front, <laughs> front row of Woodstock. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, as awesome and virile as these cicadas might feel while pumped full of psychedelics and stimulants, uh, they're doing all that drugged up fucking with no sexual organs. The entire back half of cicadas that are infected with massospora just straight up falls off, which looks pretty horrific. But it's delicious. Uh, <laughs> luckily, <laughs> luckily, these guys don't seem to realize or care, and they don't let the fact that their dick fell off get in the way of Cicada Boy Summer. No, why would they? Although... Technically, this fungus turns all the freaking cicadas gay. It causes the male cicadas who are infected to stop singing and start flapping, which is what the females are supposed to do. So other males are coming by and they're banging these infected male cicadas thinking that they're females. Obviously, this is pretty bad news for a species that exists solely to mate and spends a very long time preparing for it. But it's great news for the fungus, which gets spread all over the place by these insects, which they've essentially turned into crop dusting super spreaders. Just like STDs at a retirement home. Yeah, baby. It's everywhere. I, let's do it fucking raw. I'm, I'm well past menopause, baby. Let's go. <laughs> uh, the good news is that this fungus is expected to infect fewer than 10% of the brood X cicadas. Uh, so they're not at risk of going extinct or anything. But 10% of this is... it's. Hundreds of millions. Well, the whole reason uh, scientists believe uh, they evolved to do this periodic shit, they believe it's because of strength in numbers. Mm -hmm. So basically, if they all come out at once, the predators will be overwhelmed. Yeah. So they, if, they, if they were doing it at a normal rate, like a normal insect that isn't buried underground for 17 years, uh, they're kind of dumb insects that have no real defenses. No. They, they're just sitting ducks. So if they all go out there at once, you know, a few of them get caught by like raccoons and shit, but otherwise there's just so many of them. I, I, we have to convince the high meat people to eat these fungus uh, cicada butts. Like it's, it's rotting meat and it gets you high. Yeah. What more could you ask for? That's free drugs. Mm -hmm. uh, here's the Guardian who spoke to scientist Matt Kaysen about the fungus. Kasson said it was not uncommon for people to eat these cicadas for mind-altering oh! experiences. Oh, perfect! Since they contain amphetamines. Although it is expected for less than 5% of cicadas to be infected from the fungus, Kasson recommends avoiding the ingestion of cicadas. Quote, there's always a risk in eating cicadas pumped filled with amphetamines, Kasson said. That was just one of the thousands of compounds that we found in the cicadas, and we don't know what those other compounds are capable of doing to humans. It sounds like a challenge. Sounds You're telling me there might be other drugs in these bite-sized bugs? The, he did not say anything that about it would hurt you or kill you, right? We just don't know we what just else thought, is. We, Look, these, these cicadas are full of shrooms and meth. We don't know what else is in there. Could be LSD. But could, so, could be some weed in there. If too. it was going to kill you, I, it would be you know within my best interest to tell people yeah. that. It, it, look, you really shouldn't eat the cicadas. There might be straight up MDMA inside these cicadas. Stay away! We don't know about it. And there might be Viagra in there. We, we don't know what's in the cicadas. Could be anything. Could be anything. Don't mm -hmm. do it. Don't test it out. But if you do, let us know how it is. Yeah, we are scientists. And yeah. we, we like to hear back from you. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so. Uh, yeah, that's, that's awesome. Uh, well, yeah. except for the like deafening sound and the fact that uh, you're probably going to be running into these things with your car and you know, it's tracking times, them into the house. It's times like this, we're living in California, the land of no cicadas. Uh, just what in in the past week? What four separate fires? Oh yeah, in May it's happening again. Yeah. It's happening, baby, and it sucks. But uh, at least no cicadas. I mean, even if they lived here, they they live in uh, underneath. They they feast on tree roots. They, no would, they wouldn't fucking survive. <laughs> yeah. But speaking of animals, uh, while cicadas are completely harmless to human beings, uh, there are plenty of animals out there capable of messing you up real bad or even killing you with little to no effort. Wild animals, they're built for survival, and predators specifically are built to kill. 
Meanwhile, us humans only got to where we are through these tools. Hacks is what I call it. One on one with no weapons versus, say, a mountain lion, unless it's a cub like that one guy fought. Yeah. Uh, our chances, they're just not great, unless it's a baby, like we said. Uh, but it turns out a lot of people, specifically a lot of Americans, are actually quite confident in their ability to defeat various wild animals in hand to hand combat. Yeah, and we know this thanks to a recent survey from YouGov. I mean, the 2020 election's long behind us, so the big pollsters, they've had to get more creative with their material, uh, and we thank them for it, because YouGov has produced what is truly a, a document and a monument to mankind's arrogance. Look at this graph. They asked a simple question. Which of the following animals, if any, do you think you could beat in a fight if you were unarmed? And the results are fascinating, not just for the animals that people think they could beat, but also the animals that people think they would lose to. Uh, like, these animals at the top make sense as ones that most people think they could kill with their bare hands. But still, 28% of people don't think they could beat a rat in a fight. I mean... What if it has the plague? Yeah, it's biting all over when, you. When do we count as the end of the fight? Like, when the rat yeah, is Yeah, the rat's going to jump on you and bite you and run away, and then it wins, right? Yeah, I mean, that's like... Unless you can grab it by the tail and just beat it into the earth. Yeah, with a rat, it's like, yeah, obviously in a room with no fucking, like... Escape. Escape. Probably going to be the human... Yeah. But if we're talking about just who's going who's gonna to leave the most scratches, probably the rat, because yeah. the rat will just run away, squeeze through like underneath the door or through yeah. a crack in the wall. 31% think they'd lose to a house cat. <laughs> I mean, again, scratch and leave, or is it in a room sealed? One thing leaves. Yeah, what kind of arena are we dealing yeah. with? Yeah, 39% think they'd get their asses handed to them by a goose. Canadians will tell you that's true. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, goose is, is where it, it does sort of start to become debatable because uh, an angry goose can, in fact, fuck you up. Yeah. Yeah. They're every, mean Every sons time of I go to the park, I see, see some dumb four-year-old learning a lesson that all four-year-olds have to learn. Is that geese, they don't like you. No. Especially if you're a small child getting into their space. They will hiss at you. Open the, They got teeth. Yeah. They'll charge at you. They are fearless. Now, around the 50-50 mark, you've got just 49% of people who think they'd win in a fight against a medium-sized dog. And this, I, I as the owner of uh, a medium-sized dog who has... Your dogs are small. Well, one of my dogs, I would say, is more on the medium side. Okay. He's, he's small, medium, but he has bitten me many times. And even at his small size, uh, he, has, he has messed me up real bad with those bites. See, I think me, when I think medium, I think uh, like a lab... No. When lab. I think big, I think like bull mastiff. A lab is a large dog. Yeah, I guess. Anyway. I, I'd fight a golden retriever for no reason. Unprompted. I mean, yeah. Actually, a golden retriever. Looking all beautiful and smart. Golden retrievers are so gentle and docile that you probably could beat one in a fight, but you'd feel really bad about it afterwards because it's just like, what are you doing? I was bred to be a dog that helps blind people cross nah, the road. No, no, no. Golden retrievers look like, the, like uh, the, the dog that grew up in the Hamptons. Yeah. Exactly. That's why you could win. Yeah. They're not meant for fighting. They've had all the fighting spirit bred out of them. Yeah. They're good at fetching, being loyal, bringing yeah. your slippers. Yeah. And getting cancer. Mm. Yeah. But uh, yeah, after that is where things on this graph get really interesting. So 30% of people think that they could defeat an eagle with their bare hands. I don't ever want to like <laughs> learn or be in that situation. It yeah. Seems I mean, terrifying. Like, have you ever actually seen an eagle up close? I mean, there, there are a lot of different species of eagle. But they're all gigantic, and their talons are massive. They're very sharp. Also, they can fly, which mm -hmm. you can't. I would bet on the eagle in this one. Uh, even our, our big, strong, tough ex-president yeah, scared this, of an eagle our, when it was <laughs> right next to him. And I would have been too, honestly. Yeah. They are fucking huge. They're terrifying. Yeah. Anyway, then there's 23% of people who think they'd win a fight with a large dog. Now, no. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and it, look, again, there's a whole lot of variety in that very vague category. You might be able to defeat an elderly Great Dane that has severe arthritis. But like a pit bull? A Rottweiler? No. You are I mean, going to die. If, someone, if it's me or the dog, sealed room, I don't know. I mean, a pit bull especially, their jaws are ridiculously strong. They will take your hand off. Yeah, but I'll be missing a hand, but I'll live, I think. I think the only way the, the only way to fight a dog is if it has balls, you gotta hit those balls. Yeah. And, and punch uh, in the nose. And if it if it gets your hand in its mouth, you gotta reach in farther. Yeah, pull its and guts pull out. Its, pull its tongue out. <laughs> These are like actual yeah. tips for uh, if a 
large dog uh, tries to attack you. I, like, I'm saying this, and like I saw a coyote a couple weeks ago while I was riding my mountain bike and was like, stopped and was like, um, hey, Google, uh, what do I do with a uh, mountain? Coyotes are scared. You're just supposed to get big and go, ah. Yeah, they, they're in my neighborhood all the time while I'm out walking my dog, and they'll like, Look at us. I, I literally I get them away by just stomping on the sidewalk. It I did the thing. I was like, out. ah! And it just stared at me. And I was like, ah, I'm going to go this way. Yeah. See, so, I mean, they coyotes will fuck up a dog or a cat. But yeah. they they know to stay away from humans unless you really fuck up and do something stupid. Yeah. Uh, 17% of people, though, they think they could beat a chim- uh, chimpanzee, which is dead wrong. Yeah. Sorry. That's, so not going to happen. Not even up for debate. Uh, and it's probably due to the fact that most cute chimps uh, we see uh, in the media are juveniles or have lived in captivity their entire lives and yeah. rely entirely on humans. But even like pretty much every movie chimp you see is like a teenager, not a full grown adult. Dude, all you got to do is watch that the, the interview with the lady that got her face ripped off. Yeah. It ripped her face off. Yeah. Uh, anyways, a full grown angry chimp can and will literally rip off. Your face and your genitals. It happens a lot. Yeah. It's it, fucked up. Those chimps have read the manual on how to take us down. <laughs> yeah. Now, have you ever seen a hairless chimp? It is pure muscle. It's pure muscle. You don't fuck with these animals. Who is he? What's his at? <laughs> Looking good. <laughs> uh, next up, 15% of people think they could beat a king cobra. Eh, okay. Stomp on it. If you get lucky and you don't get bit. The, this one's more You play a, a little song. This, <laughs> it's a good thing I brought my flute with me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, this was more about luck, I think. You just close the basket. Yeah. But, and it's away. But yeah, I mean, the King Cobra, one bite from it will kill you. It'll kill 20 people. It's it's a it's a very strong bite. And so it's like, it's 50-50. If it gets, if it gets you once, yeah. that's it. But I, I think with the Cobra, yeah, you do have a chance. It's just you can't mess up at There's all. There's a very slim margin of error. Yeah. You know what's fucking nuts is it's been seen recently, uh, the p- videos of people inadvertently handling, uh, like, the, the... TikTok, like, yeah, TikTokers the, picking the up, The jellyfish like, jellyfish that are like, like oh, I'm yeah. gonna lick it, <laughs> Yeah, just like, idiots. Uh, that, yeah, Moments the, away from death. The craziest one was a few years ago, someone, some tourists in Australia picked up a, a blue ring octopus, which is yeah. this tiny octopus, and they're like, oh, look, look at how this cute, cute little is. octopus, and people are like, what the... F-? Like, because that, that thing, if if you upset it even the slightest, it just injects you're, you're you... Dead. It injects you with, like, Enough toxin to take down an elephant. Yeah, and it's like just floating in their hand in some extra water. Yeah. It's, Ooh, it's look at this kid. You're, in, you're in Australia. Don't fucking touch anything. And speaking of Australia, yeah. 14% of people think they could beat a kangaroo. W- who are these people? <laughs> Unlike with chimps, you don't even need to shave a kangaroo to see how absolutely jacked they are. They're huge. They're looking for fights, too. They'll walk up and be like... They're, they're known for boxing. Yeah. I mean... There have been a few... The but, video the video where few. the guy knocks it. Yeah. But it doesn't phase it. It just kind of shocks it. Like, what the fuck? Yeah. I just got hit? You can get in a few good punches with a kangaroo. And, yeah, in a wildlife setting, you'll probably just scare them away. They're going to... They, they're going to be like, this is not it. worth my, yeah. my trouble. We're, we're talking about a fight, though. We're not talking about scaring the other person away. We are talking about a fight to the death. Yeah. What are you going to do to a fucking kangaroo? That is one of the best videos of all time. <laughs> Because <laughs> it was attacking his dog. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is great. Yeah. Don't fuck with kangaroos. Twelve uh, percent of people think they could beat a wolf without any weapons. Which, again, have you ever actually seen a wolf? I think most people haven't. They just they. It's like oh, it's just a, it's a dog. It's the same as a Siberian husky. Yeah. What's uh, what's the big deal? They're fucking huge. They are ridiculous. It looks like trick photography when people are in a even photo like the half breeds that the, the oh yeah the wolf dogs yeah, yeah. they're. The regular wolf Ridiculous. is much larger than that. Yeah, there's simply no way you are winning in a fight with a wolf. No. Uh, interestingly, only 9% of people think they could beat a crocodile, when crocodiles are actually one of the only dangerous animals on this list that people have, in fact, learned to fight into submission. He's got to hold his mouth shut. Well, you got to get behind it. Like the, no, it'll roll you around. Well, in, in water, yes. you got to get it out of the water. The jaws, a lot of pressure going down. Can't really lift them up. Yeah. You can just hold those jaws shut. I mean, we Put had a rubber band around it. We had a guy named the Crocodile Hunter, and yeah. it wasn't a crocodile that took him down. No. It was a damn stingray. And they're not on this list, because damn near nobody would say they could take down a stingray. Well, you can't see them. They're in the water, brushing up all the sand. Um, but yeah, I mean, with a crocodile, yes, it would still be extremely dangerous. But, I mean, your chance is probably a lot better than some of the other animals on this list, if you at least 
know what you're doing. Mm-hmm. So that's interesting. Uh, and then we have 8% of people who think, for whatever fucking reason, <laughs> because they're delusional, this is, this because they wanted stupid. to sound tough on yeah. a, on a, on a, on a uh, whatever, uh, they think they could beat a gorilla in a fight. A fucking gorilla. I got the gorilla mindset. I'm ready to take down a gorilla. These things weigh up to 500 pounds. They are 10 times stronger than humans. They can run up to 25 miles per hour. You'll be half dead just from it charging at you. Your soul will leave your body. There's, like, you ever see videos of gorillas in like a legit fight with each other at the zoo? It's horrifying. Like, it is terrifying. There's uh, uh, the San Diego Zoo, which knows what they're doing. They had to like replace the glass on their gorilla cage because one of them just got a little pissed off at the crowd and ran and punched it and just shattered the fucking glass. This glass is like six inches thick. Yeah. But yeah, I guess, yeah, sure, you might be able to beat a gorilla in a fight, you uh, fucking asshole. God uh, damn it. Moving on, though, 8% of people, and I'm sure that this 8% includes uh, Donald Trump Jr. And think Wayne LaPierre of the yeah. National Rifle Association. I uh, think they could defeat an elephant in a fight. <laughs> now, Donald Trump Jr., this is without weapons. Yeah, no um, weapons. That just, I mean, it, it's ridiculous to think that you could take down an elephant. But, yeah, how uh, does that even work? Anyways, like at least with some of these other animals, you can visualize maybe the biggest, toughest guy on earth having a shot against something uh, that we talked about previously. But an elephant? He's going to hit him with his trunk. Get out of here. They'll just step on you. Yeah. Like there's videos online. They're horrific. I don't recommend watching them. But there's I videos. can't. Live leaks down. <laughs> there are videos of elephants at circuses uh, finally realizing that they don't have to take this shit anymore. Yeah. And killing Loads of people, they do it very easily. It's just, bloop, bloop, dead, 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 dead. It's, uh, it, you're not going to win a fight against an elephant. No. It's going to step on you and crush your skull and fucking kill you. Uh, uh, anyways, yeah. another 8%, this 8% of badasses. Category. It's all the same people. Yeah. Uh, this other 8% say they could beat a lion. I want to see the and, guy that was like the 9% where it's like, uh, whatever it was, kangaroo. And like it's like you know, uh, kangaroo, the, no problem. Wait, wait, hold on. Lion? <laughs> That's the line. Yeah, yeah. but uh, yeah, I mean, I, at this point, you got to really just assume people on in the survey are, they're either trolling, which there probably is some amount of that, yeah. or everything they know about animals is from Disney movies. And they're like, yeah, lion, like Simba. Yeah, yeah, I could be that fucking pussy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like you, just, you have no chance of winning a fight against a fucking lion. No. It go see some animals in real life. Go to the zoo. It's it's a great time. No, they're Ameri gonna antagonize them. America's yeah. Don't fuck with the animals. But America's back. The zoos are open. They need they they've been closed this whole time. The animals they need your support. Have, the animals have been loving it, but. Uh, they will have to euthanize those animals if you don't go down to the zoo and uh, pay up. That's what they do. So, yeah. <laughs> but finally, though, we've reached the end of the list. The elite of the elite, the 6% of people who believe that they would win in a one-on-one -on -one fight against a North American grizzly bear, a creature whose scientific Latin name literally includes the word horrible because of how horrible <laughs> the grizzly bear is. These fuckers weigh up to 1,700 pounds. They are eight feet tall standing up. They can run 30 miles an hour. They can fit your entire head inside their mouth. And just look at those paws. If you're wondering about the metric versions of those numbers, just trust us on this one. If any animal is going to kill you with the same effort uh, you put into killing a fly, it's the grizzly bear. And you're easier to catch than a fly is. I mean, I, I guess these people just watched the first half of Grizzly Man. <laughs> great movie about a guy making friends with a family. Never Grizzly. finished it, never but finished I'm sure it, it turned out great. The, the second half of the tape was all messed up. I just I just assume they live. Ha I'm, I assume he's still up there in Alaska hanging out with those grizzly bears. And being... that Warner Herzog guy's doing great. He's on Mandalorian. <laughs> you love it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Spoiler alert, though, it did not end great in the end. Uh, it would it would honestly be great if YouGov were able to track down the people who said they could defeat some of these animals and send them on a trip down to the local zoo or animal sanctuary to get a close up look. Uh, at what they said they could beat with their bare hands. Or maybe just ask them if their opinion has changed or remains the same. No, let me at them. Let me at them. Oh, yeah, no, I I know. I said I couldn't beat that, but now that I got a look at them... I meant Grizzly Adams. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so um, there you go. If you think you could beat any of those animals, let us know in the comments. Yeah. And, um, or if you have beaten one of those animals. Yeah, if you've, if Post you've proof. successfully fought a grizzly bear with your bare hands, mm -hmm. let us know. But anyways, in other animal news, science is a constant process, and we are constantly learning new things about topics that one might assume were already fully understood. For example, recently a team of Japanese scientists made the incredible discovery that mammals can, in fact, breathe through the anus. Nice.
I'm breathing right now. Well, I, or at least mice, yeah. rats, and pigs can breathe through their anuses. But, you know, that means there's a pretty decent chance us humans can, too, if we just put our minds to it. And a straw in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, here's one of the study's authors in the official press release uh, for these findings. The rectum has a mesh of fine blood vessels just beneath the surface of its lining, which means that drugs administered through the anus are readily absorbed into the bloodstream. This made us wonder whether oxygen could also be delivered into the bloodstream in the same way. We used experimental models of respiratory failure in mice, pigs, and rats to try out two methods, delivering oxygen into the rectum in gas form and infusing an oxygen-rich liquid via the same route. And from that same press release, the researchers prepared the lining of the rectum by rubbing it to cause inflammation and, yeah, increase, like <laughs> and increase blood flow. These changes were confirmed by increased genetic markers and improved the effectiveness of the oxygen delivery. However, because such a preparation requirement would be unacceptable for human patients... <laughs> In whose fucking world? <laughs> the researchers also tried using oxygenated perfluorodecalin, PFD, a liquid that can be safely used in the human body and is already in selective clinical use and that can carry large amounts of oxygen and carbon dioxide. The team demonstrated that delivery of oxygen both as a gas and in liquid form was beneficial. Oxygenation levels increased and behavior normalized, while survival was prolonged. The team also confirmed the improvement in oxygenation at the cellular level by immunochemical staining. Furthermore, they found that the minimal amount of PFD that was absorbed along with the oxygen caused no harm, and gut bacteria were not disrupted, indicating the safety of these methods in the animal models. Uh, anyway, as for how this knowledge is useful in any way, uh, the research was actually inspired by the COVID-19 pandemic, specifically early on when ventilators were in short supply and people were li literally suffocating to death. I'm not laughing at the people dying. I'm laughing at uh, someone hooking a ventilator up to an asshole. Mm. Maybe China was onto something when they were doing the uh, the tests. Anal swabs. Yeah. yeah. They're like, and we'll just, you know, put a little uh, oxygen Tunk. thing in there. <laughs> uh, now, what this research suggests is that there might be an easier way. Instead of invasively jamming a tube down someone's throat into their lungs so a machine can get oxygen to them, doctors might be able to just give them an enema of some oxygen-rich goop every couple of hours. Yeah, it's just like some sort of, it's just like a gel that has a bunch of oxygen in it. You stick it in your butt. Your butt has all these blood vessels that are absorbing nutrients. You're breathing through your asshole. Sounds great. Yeah. Now, when can I poop out of my mouth? I don't want that. Now, of course, lots more research needs to be done here, but it's, it's promising. Yeah. The, the real question, though, that I have is whether filling your asshole with oxygen goop means that you can swim underwater for long periods of time. Will this make me into Aquaman? Because that would be fucking sick. Yeah, that'd be great, actually. Uh, and also, I mean, taking this further, if this is legit, since oxygen is vital to all athletic activity, our athletic competition is going to have to start checking athletes' assholes to make sure they're not boofing oxygen. Maybe. Hi, ref. Feeling pretty good right now. You might want to get down there and check. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right, let's move on to uh, more news about the January 6th U.S. Capitol riot. And Speaking how, of assholes. Yeah, the people who did it <laughs> simply can't help themselves when it comes to bragging about their involvement in the riot and then getting arrested because of their loose lips. Our latest example of this trend is Daniel Warmus, who was arrested this week following an FBI investigation that began not long after the riot when he bragged about being there while at the dentist, a place where you <laughs> shouldn't be talking at all. Uh, yeah, so I was in the Capitol riot. And as soon as I was on TV, I was me. I was here, I was here and I went to Nancy Pelosi's office, and I showed her mail, and uh, yeah, it was pretty cool. And then AOC looked at me and she said, you're so attractive. <laughs> From the Washington Post. Your teeth look terrible. It looks like a baton from a policeman. Just bash those in. Yep, that's right. I was there. I was fighting with the DC Metro Police. <laughs> uh, from the Washington Post. Less than a week after the failed insurrection at the U.S. Capitol, someone at a dentist's office in western New York couldn't believe what was being said nearby. During a routine checkup on January 12th, an individual listened in as an alleged rioter who was getting his teeth cleaned bragged about his breach of the building, according to federal authorities. Daniel Warmus of Alden, New York, talked of smoking marijuana inside the <laughs> Capitol and refusing a police officer's order to leave the building, and even proudly played a video from January 6th. A, a federal complaint states, after an individual overheard Warmus talking about his experience while at a dentist's office, the person, who authorities said wished to remain anonymous, alerted the FBI and passed along Warmus' phone number and home address. That mundane trip to the dentist's office led to an investigation that concluded this week with Warmus, 37, in police custody. The dentist was probably like, okay, so what, what is it? You, you, you a smoker? 
Yeah, actually, I, not cigarettes. I smoke weed. Like, all right, well, you know, you just got to do... I smoked weed at the U.S. Capitol. You want to see a video of it? <laughs> what? Yeah, I was there when they, we were riding. Yeah, here's a video of it. This, that's me. <laughs> so, yeah, there's a pattern with a lot of these Capitol riders. A lot of them seem kind of dumb. And that's, ju- that's not just us saying that, by the way. <laughs> a key defense tactic that a lot of these riders' lawyers are going with is essentially the president told them to do it or Fox News poisoned their brain. But one lawyer in particular is just outright calling his client and other Capitol riot defendants stupid, though he's using much more colorful and derogatory language. Uh, Here's attorney Albert Watkins, attorney for the QAnon shaman, speaking to Talking Points Memo. And I'm probably going to bleep some of this, but uh, you get it. Here's what he said. A lot of these defendants, and I'm going to use this colloquial term perhaps disrespectfully, but they're all fucking short bus people. These are people with brain damage. They're fucking... They're on the goddamn spectrum. But they're our brothers, our <laughs> sisters, our neighbors, our co-workers. They're part of our country. These aren't bad people. They don't have prior criminal history. Fuck. They were subjected to four plus years of goddamn propaganda, the likes of which the world has not seen since fucking Hitler. <laughs> so, Your Jesus. Honor, my, my client is uh, straight up R word. He yeah. is. <laughs> Hard R. Hard R. So, yeah, that's... Uh... Wow. Uh, It's also worth mentioning that this is the same Albert Watkins who represented the McCloskey couple last summer after they brandished guns at a Black Lives Matter protest uh, that was happening in their neighborhood. Uh, He's also the same Al Watkins whose website bio was so absurdly narcissistic that it includes him bragging that he handled a defamation suit so expertly that the woman doing the defaming ended up killing herself. Yeah, I did that. Um, That's how good I am at being a lawyer. uh, Anyways, the defense of uh, calling your client the R word is certainly a tactic, and we look forward to seeing how it plays out. The old R word defense. Your Honor, my my client client couldn't. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. It's it's so weird. Like, we, we... We've made a lot of progress not saying that word because that used to be just some shit everyone said yeah, all the fucking literally time. everyone at school. Yeah. yeah. So it's we've got it, it is funny how shocking it, it is. It's like, a, yeah, it's just like now. 10 years later, like Jesus Christ, dude, come yeah. on. Anyway, before we get to the headlines half of the show, it's time for a word, a non floor word yeah. from this week's sponsor. Yeah, we need to chill out. Uh, CBD isn't about what you feel. It's about what you don't feel. Pain, nervousness, sleeplessness. If you experience any of these things, Feel CBD is a safe and natural solution without any harmful side effects. Feels is a better way to feel better. Feels is a premium CBD that will help you get your head clear and feel your best. It's hassle-free, delivered directly to your door. Now, CBD naturally helps reduce stress, anxiety, pain, and sleeplessness. There's no hangover or addiction. And we both use Feels to make sure we can get a good night's sleep and not feel groggy in the morning. Uh, It's great. If you're up up late, you can't get to sleep because your mind's still running from looking at the damn computer screen. I use it for uh, inflammation, pain, neck Mm -hmm. pain, back pain. It's great for it. You just place a few drops of Feels under your tongue and feel the difference within minutes. The thing to remember about CBD is that finding your right dose is important and everyone's dose is different. So Feels offers a free CBD hotline to help guide your personal experience so that you find your perfect dose. The Feels customer service team is dedicated to making sure you get the best use of your CBD. Joining the Feels monthly membership makes your self-care easy. Uh, You'll save money on every order and you can pause or cancel at any time. Start feeling better with Feels. Become a member today by going to feels.com slash weird and you'll get 50% off your first order with free shipping. That is F-E-A-L-S dot com slash weird to become a member and get 50% off automatically taken off your first order with free shipping. Feels.com slash weird. Now into the weirdest headlines from this week. More animal news. Hangry alligator chases people through Wendy's parking lot in Florida. Where's that? Where are the 8%? I heard some of you people want to fight me. Hey, there's a problem down at the Wendy's. Uh, get out of the way. Hold up. I think I can take this. Yeah. I've, I've been waiting for this opportunity my whole life. He's got his 8 percenters patch on his jacket. <laughs> I, I, I like the idea that the alligator is only there because it's hangry and not just because it's fucking Florida and there's yeah. alligators just sort of everywhere. Mm-hmm. He, he must have been hangry. He wanted well, that chicken Wendy's, sandwich. Wendy's should have gave him some chicken sandwiches. Yeah. I hear it's the best one. A lot of people argue about it. You Some know, people say Popeyes, but I, I swear it's that Wendy's. The best way to defeat an alligator or a crocodile is you give it a frosty and give it brain freeze. Yeah. Start freaking out. Yeah. 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 It's uh. That's how you. Or you dip fight. your fries in the frosty in front of it, and it's like ew. Or you hold your frosty in front of it, and you say, "See that?" No, that's Dairy this, Queen. Oh, well. That's Dairy Queen. Shit. Okay. But that would probably blow its mind. Like, yeah, yeah. Wait, what? 
Yeah. How's it, how it just floating up there like that? It's not falling out. How do you do that? <laughs> ah! <laughs> uh, Chinese safari park, sincerely sorry for not telling public escaped leopards on the loose. <laughs> they waited like a week. There are three fucking leopards that escaped the zoo, and they're just like, well, we'll hear about it wherever Listen, it is. Listen, we didn't want to stress anyone out with the knowledge that three, you know, deadly predator, wild cats, large cats were on the loose in the city. Just, uh, you know, we don't know where they are. We didn't, you, you know, when you tell people these things, they tend to freak out. I feel like, like, China specifically is, is uh, like, getting really good at... Uh, Using this as a as a solution for like a lot of problems, like we didn't want to freak anyone out, so we didn't really, you know, make a big deal out of the rocket coming down and landing on Earth. Uh, the leopards got out. We figured, uh, you know, people we, traveling uh, with coronavirus yeah. over to the United States and other countries. We figured, you know, the rocket probably gonna land in the ocean. No need to make everyone else worry about a rocket. You know, your chances of getting hit by this rocket very low, just like your chances of getting eaten by one of these leopards. Mm-hmm. I mean, this city has millions of people in it. Really, I mean, you got as much of a chance of getting eaten by a shark here as you do getting eaten by a leopard. So, and then if, whenever you know, someone uh, does get bit or attacked by it, they react the same way they did to NASA. Oh, you found it, great. There it is. There was, it was never a problem. See, you're alive. Right there the whole time. <laughs> you got a great story. We all had and, fun. And uh, yeah. And we're going to put these lepers right back where we found them. And this time, no, we're going to close the door behind us yes. when we go home. Mm-hmm. Promise. You learn, you learn. Yes. Men fall eight floors down elevator shaft during brawl, police. <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, it's those elevator doors, if you push on them hard enough, they give. Yeah, at the bottom. And, yeah. And it's these, like that guy that went over in the, the, the scooter. The wheelchair? Yeah. Years and years ago. I think ago. that guy died. Yeah, he died. But uh, yeah, that video of the guy just ramming into no the No video. Live leak's gone. Yeah, shit. Anyway, probably not worth watching because it, I mean, it is kind of funny. But then you find out he died and it's... Well, someone put the Willy Wonka sound effects on it and that's what made it funny. Yeah. I mean, if he had been on like the first floor, he'd be fine. Yeah. It's just, he wasn't. He fell but, yeah, these guys were on the eighth floor. They it was a fight that I assume, much like Peter Griffin versus that chicken, it's just a fight that just went on. Peter, Ch- Peter Griffin is the 8%. Yeah, and uh, they crashed into the elevator door and whoop, down they go. Eight floors, landed on top of the elevator, and presumably just kept on fighting from there. Picked up yeah. right where they left off. Mm-hmm. Fought as it went back up to the floor that they had fell from. Yeah. yeah. Well, good for them. No, I think they were seriously hurt, actually. Oh, okay. Well, bad for them. Yeah. Gwyneth Paltrow's company sued after man claims vagina scented candle exploded. This is the second. I was just going to say, this is like history of Deja itself. vu. Yeah, it was like a few months ago someone said that their Gwyneth Paltrow <laughs> goop vagina and candle it, exploded. Apparently, the response from the company is like, oh, well, you're not trimming the wick or something like that. That's not. Like, uh, like, look, there's millions of candles yeah, out there that aren't exploding. <laughs> yeah, it's not like a common candle problem. Yeah. I feel like I would have heard about that by now. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, it, it's just, it's so funny that not only does Goop have a vagina scented candle, which is already very strange, the vagina scented candle is also apparently a bomb. One in a million It's not people. a vagina scented candle. It's a candle that smells like Gwyneth Paltrow's vagina, yeah, which it's... apparently is well maintained, has like that... Uh, you know, you put the humidifier on it, you know, some sprays and stuff like that. I, I don't know. I, I the, the last time we talked about it, we we looked into it and it was something like that. It's like, no, it's no a, this is how my vagina smells. The, the story is that they were developing candle scents and they were bringing them to uh, Gwyneth for approval. And she picked one up. She's like, smells like this one vagina. smells like my vagina. We should call it. This one smells like my vagina. And so they did. And they sell it now right alongside their... Uh, the, Asshole candle. The eggs that you shove up inside your cooch mm-hmm. that uh, that what supposedly do? do something good. Mostly they just are great for infection. But, you know, that's goop for you. Yeah. Divorces fall 70% in China after government orders couples to cool off. <laughs> hey, results. Cool off. Nope. No divorces for you. Yeah, yeah. I want you to sit. They, they basically they, they, there's like a 30 day waiting period for all divorces because yeah. the divorce rate was going up and up. And they're like, all right, now you, you have to first submit the divorce forms then you have to keep on living with each other for 30 days. And then after 30 days, if you still want to do it, we'll let you do it. But you got to wait those 30 days. That's why that uh, the, the tip that everyone gets like at weddings is like 
don't go to sleep angry. It's like, no, go to sleep if you're fighting. You wake up and you're like, what are we even fighting about? Yeah. Yeah. It's true. If you're having a fight, go to sleep. Both of you go to bed. The most conflicts are best resolved by just being like, I'll get back to you in 12 hours. And then no one cares. (laughs) No one cares. It's so true. Everything is only important to you in that moment. Everything else, hindsight, you're just like, what's the point? Anything you've ever been worried about in your life, too. You're just like, why was I worrying about that? Yeah. Yeah. Biden accelerates away when asked about Israel. (laughs) In a Ford F-150 Lightning. Yeah. Check out this brand new electric truck. He, uh... Yeah, he was at the Ford plant. They were showing off the new electric truck, which is a very exciting vehicle. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the the stats on it are great. He was driving it around the test track. Just he's really getting some speed in it. The man loves to drive. Yeah, and he pulls up to the reporters, and you're probably like, "Mr. President, can I ask you about Israel?" He's like, "No, you can't." <laughs> <laughs> beep beep. But uh, yeah, that that is also a perfect summation of uh, how his administration has yeah. handled the current situation in Israel, which uh, is fucking Avoidance. awful. Yeah. It is uh, yeah. basically your tax dollars are being spent to kill children mm-hmm. if you live in the U.S. and a lot of other countries. And yeah. it's uh, fucking awful. And vroom, vroom. It's, uh, yeah, it's our fault. You're yeah. paying for that shit. And Joe Biden just turning a blind eye to it. Mm-hmm. Ah, me and Benjamin Netanyahu, we're... It's a tough relationship. You know, you know, you, you, we don't, it's, it's complicated. It's yeah, complicated. It, literally everyone online, it's like the uh, Megan McCain's of the world. Oh, you hate Jewish people? Yeah. Don't let any, and I'm glad to see, because that shit was getting real popular over the last few years where like people yeah, were anything you say about conflating Israel, yeah. any criticism of the government and military of Israel, which is a very specific thing, conflating that to mean that you're essentially an anti-Semite. Yeah. I'm glad to see in the past couple of weeks that that is collapsing (laughs) and no one is taking that shit seriously anymore because it's true uh like it's not even like the problems people have with israel aren't even specific they're specifically with one political party out of like fucking 15 political parties in israel which is the likud party the benjamin netanyahu's in those are the people we have a problem with they're the ones setting the policy of the whole country Mm -hmm. disliking them has absolutely nothing to do with anti-Semitism. Yes. So it's it's good to see that people are waking up to that. Yeah. Anyways. Uh, a French artist is under fire for hanging a disrespectful replica skeleton of Napoleon's horse over the military leader's tomb. It's actually fucking sick. Yeah. It's First of all, if you're ever in Paris, visit Napoleon's tomb. It is fucking wild. It's like, uh, I don't know. It's it's like it's like a tomb you imagine in like Game of Thrones. Hmm. It's they w- They really went... All out for... But his penis is in New Jersey. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Napoleon's tomb is wild. And that now, for a limited time, there's a replica <laughs> horse skeleton suspended by wire hanging over uh, from the dome over where his body is. And it's fucking sick. Yeah. And, um, yeah. But a lot of people don't like it? They're like, oh, you're making a mockery of Napoleon. And it's like... And the artist, he's like, look, horses have played as much of a role in this country's history and Napoleon's history. He had his favorite horse. The horse is in all the paintings we have of Napoleon. So I'm trying to honor the horse. In a lot of uh, warrior cultures, the horse is buried with the man. Mm -hmm. This is going to be just like the Eiffel Tower. First, they were like, Mm. And then they're going to leave it there yeah, forever. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's that's the funniest thing about the Eiffel Tower. Like, is, it's hideous. Yeah, get that fucking thing out of here. And then yeah. it just becomes the most iconic symbol of Paris. Yeah. Um, yeah. Also, if, when you visit Napoleon's tomb, uh, next door or a few doors down is the... French Museum of War. I don't remember the exact name, but it's fucking, it's one of my favorite museums I've ever been to. It has the most detailed, like, step-by-step history of the two world wars I've ever seen Mm -hmm. uh, from the French point of view, but it it does a great job of also explaining how the French went from being the uh, strongest military force in the world to just getting fucking rolled on in, like, about 100 years. And uh, it's mostly, it's a series of very poor decisions. And... uh, very yeah. inaccurate predictions about the future. In a more niche area, we have a wonderful uh, early eight, uh, early 1900s uh, robot museum. Oh yeah, with the, uh, the Muse- Musée des Automatons. Yes. Yeah, it was it's very yeah, creepy. All these fucking weird old like uh, robots where you stick in a coin and it's like this must have there's, blown people's there's fucking minds. There's a whole minds, like uh, like entire like displays with like cities and and yeah. other little robots. That and shit stuff. was wild, crazy. Brits urged to drink 124 pints 
each to help struggling pubs get back on their feet. This fucking rules. Now, this I, is a stimulus. This is just like at the beginning of the pandemic when, like, anytime I bought, like, a meal from a restaurant and takeout, I, I was like, I'm, I'm helping the economy. You know, I did a little helping of the economy today by purchasing the, goes and services. The Joe Biden quote, the, the helps the economy, hurts no one, helps everyone. <laughs> it's, just, it's another fucking TikTok thing. I'm outing myself again. But like, it's just people on TikTok buying extravagant things. Yeah. And it's helps the Joe the Biden quote and they're lip syncing it. <laughs> That's great. But it stimulates I, the economy. I love, I, I, I calling it everyone, everyone, all the young punters in Britain this summer are going to be like, they're going to be keeping track of their 124 pints. To I make did sure. my part. Did yeah. you? It's like war bonds. Yeah, it's like uh, <laughs> it's like that old Churchill speech. Like, we will drink pints in the pubs. We will drink in the park, on the sidewalk, in our homes. We will drink lagers. We will drink stouts. We will drink IPAs. We will drink and we will drink and we will drink. And we will never give up. We will never surrender. We will drink until all 124 pints. Are yep. in our gullets. You know what we need? Someone to invent uh, a urinal that comes out of the ground so that people don't piss all over the streets. By God, they've done it. Uh, Every I, city should have that. They, they really should. Anyway, here's a, here's a, a two-parter about our, our current situation here in California. Political animal. California governor hopeful greets voters with thousand-pound bear. <laughs> California governor candidate under investigation over thousand-pound bear sidekick. <laughs> you see this bear? I beat his ass. <laughs> This is John Cox, who has run for office dozens of times and never won. His, he most recently lost badly to Gavin Newsom in 2018, the first time around. But he's, he's back at it again, and his branding this time, he's calling himself the Beast. John the Beast Cox. He's like, Gavin's, he's a, he's a, he's a pretty boy. He's a beauty. He's beauty, and I'm the Beast. He's hot. And that's why he's, a, he's such a sexy boy. Not me. Not me. Nothing sexy about me. That's why I brought this bear with me. See? Just like this bear, I'm a beast. And it's just fucking weird. It's just him at these campaign stops with this big, probably heavily sedated bear just sitting no, there. No, he beat its ass because he's part of the 8%. <laughs> this bear who I defeated in hand single, hand in combat. single combat. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he, he brought the bear to San Diego, which has uh, very strict laws about uh, wildlife that isn't in their world-renowned zoos. Yeah, it's a thousand pound bear. Yeah, you can't just be, you know, traveling with a... Huge Kodiak bear. If he if they don't let him do it anymore, he should really just get like a giant, uh, beefy, uh, hairy gay guy to follow him around. Yeah. They told me I couldn't have that wildlife bear, so I got a bear of my own. I went down to West Hollywood and I <laughs> found the biggest, scariest bear I could find. And I beat his ass. Yeah, I beat his ass. <laughs> they said I couldn't. I think he kind of liked it. <laughs> he kept telling me to keep going. <laughs> Uh, anyways, that's it for Weekly Weird News this week. Again, we are uh, going to be offline next week, so no yeah. videos next week. Uh, but, uh, you know, fingers crossed that nothing happens that's newsworthy. Yeah, I hope not. It's always it's always such a pain in the ass coming back from a week off and just being like, oh, fuck. Anyways, uh, you don't don't forget about us, but also at the same time, uh, we'll see you uh, uh, after our yeah little little break here. You'll find something else to watch. No, don't just watch our videos over and over again. Yeah, watch your old ones. Uh, in fact, we have two videos you can watch right here. One is about the absolutely chaotic and confusing streaming landscape that just got even dumber, uh, and then we also have a brand new episode of Tech News Day about people who just keep falling for Elon Musk Bitcoin scams. See uh, you in a week. Bye bye.